Welcome to another edition of Len's Burning Bush. I am Len Harvey. Before I bring on my guest for the week, I want to talk about what's really burning my bush. In 1960s, the Star Trek TV show Space, The Final Frontier. They stated that these are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life, new civilizations, and to boldly go where no man has gone before. Well, billionaires apparently have figured this out as well. On Tuesday morning, former Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos boarded Blue Origin's New Shepard spacecraft in West Texas with his brother Mark, Mercury 13 astronaut candidate Wally Funk, and an 18-year-old Dutch student for the first unpiloted suborbital flight with an all-civilian crew. Now, the Blue Origin accomplishment was the second suborbital flight in just nine days. Can you believe that? In only nine days, they had two of them. And, of course, this is using their own money. Richard Branson was the other one, the other billionaire, who blasted off last week. Now, the weeks leading up to the launch featured renewed criticism of the so-called billionaire space race, which I didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently it is. Supporters of the billionaires were quick to note that this flight wasn't just about ego or tourism. Yeah, sure. No ego. When you have enough money to go to the moon, apparently traveling in a private plane is, you know, to anywhere in the world at a moment's notice, isn't enough anymore, apparently. Bezos and Branson's effort could set the stage for an expansion of space travel and technology that could eventually affect everyone. Yeah, everyone. It's a dubious claim that rests more on faith than evidence, but it was repeatedly widely covered as all the major news networks dedicated hours and hours of coverage to the Blue Origin launch, Bezos Blue Origin, which was developed uh, a 60-foot tall vertically launched rocket, and Branson's got Virgin Galactic, which built an air launch rocket-powered space plan, a plane, that is. And now they're going to begin marketing themselves to wealthy thrill-seekers, other billionaires, uh, making suborbital jaunts more routine. Now, Blue Origin may conduct up to two more flights for paying customers in 2021, though they haven't discussed how much, but at least one ticket was sold at auction for apparently $28 million for this. But the identity was unknown of that person. They apparently bowed out uh, last minute citing scheduling conflicts. I bet they were a little scared. I bet they were a little scared. But they'll have the cash to, to, to do it at a later date. Virgin Galactic plans to fly one more test flight before beginning to offer seats in early 2022. Now, that's for about 600 people. Now, get this. Tick people have bought the tickets for 200000 and 250000 respectively, which is about the medium home income in the United States, I, I, I think. So that's, uh, I guess Virgin Galactic is going to be the bargain basement rocket uh, that you could, you could get to, $250,000. The company is also accepting reservations for the new tickets, they're expected to sell at an even higher price point. Oh, so this is what we really need now, wasting time going up in a rocket. I think I will pass, not only for financial reasons, but I, I'm like the late, great Casey Kasem, who once said, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. With that being said, it's time to bring on my guest for the week. She is making her second appearance on the show. She is a glutton for punishment uh, when mm -hmm. she comes on twice. She's a longtime radio personality, but she started when she was about four in Cincinnati, yep. New York, and even Nashville. Please welcome the very lovely, talented Dana Race to Lens Burning Bush. Now, are you getting up in a rocket? That's what I want to know. Uh, absolutely not. I am not doing it. One... I don't have a, I have not the billion dollars. I do not, I well, do not have a billion dollars. I mean, Richard Branson's letting you do it for about 250. I mean, come on. You, it's kind of like you bring your own lunch, but $250,000, you could go <laughs> up in a rocket. Bring it, bring it in my uh, Scooby-Doo lunchbox. Yeah. Oh, my Scooby-Doo lunchbox. I, I love that. Scooby-Doo-Doo. Um, <laughs> You know, I just don't understand. I mean, you have this kind of money that you could now just waste it in this form. Now, I will say this, that there are um, astronauts or people that have said this renewed interest in the space program is a good thing. It is. I, you know what? I give them that. But here's the thing. They're taking off. 
going up and coming back down. I mean, what and what point is that? What's the point? What are they doing? They're not proving anything that we haven't already proved. You know what e I mean? E exactly. <laughs> Must come down. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, they're so, it's stupid. It's ridiculous. And to me, it's like saying, I've got money, I got spare money to spend. You know, okay, let's throw that in everybody's face, you know? Yeah, especially now. I mean, with everything going on, people are fighting for, you know, for checks to come. And, and people, some people, you know, in the restaurant industry this year got killed because yeah. of covid right and people that were working in it you know you have to go and tip more and here he is just going <laughs> and again god bless him that he's made this much money right i i think that's wonderful and branson's actually a good guy yeah. um oh, but jeff's know, not <laughs> i don't know i well apparently not his wife doesn't think so well his ex-wife and i'll tell you every time they mention him i think of her i'm like good for you for not signing that prenup <laughs> She gets a she gets the yeah. cash register going every time. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness! They're like, what a smart smart woman. I mean, yes, you don't go into the damn relationship thinking. Well, at least you know I would think most people don't go into a marriage expecting a divorce. But she was prepared. She was just like, you want out? You better write that check. You keep adding those zeros. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, 60% of all marriages end in divorce, and I think the other 40% think about it. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> I mean, think of this. If you were Mrs. Bezos, mm -hmm. you would be, I mean, come on. What, how great would this be? You oh. you and Melinda Gates would be hanging out too, right? Oh, you know what? Listen, there. I wouldn't be complaining at all. Oh, I know. <laughs> You know, no complaints whatsoever, but I'm not. No. <laughs> not her. no, let's try filling out that dating profile. Billionaire looking for companionship to well, he, snuggle on the couch. Is he dating anybody? Either I, one I, of them? I think he is. I don't know about her uh, from what I understand. So, well, I'm not in, I don't go on that side. So, I'm not in <laughs> you just want to see if Bezos is available. I understand. <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, you know, you might be able to with Amazon Prime. You might be able to find out. Yeah, is he is he one of those where you can just go ahead and put it in the cart? Yeah, add to the cart. <laughs> yep, add it to the cart, or it's that one click to pay. Yeah, one one click to pay. Make sure you use your uh, card or whatever. Yeah, it's a, yeah, your dating profile. Uh, make sure you how to get a billionaire in in ninety days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's got that one. Look, can I read that book? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that would be better for you. See, I think, see, I always thought, you know, you would be great doing a, a podcast about the whole dating thing. Ugh. But imagine being a billionaire looking for dates. You got to yeah. also, the, the one thing that you have to think about, though, which is, again, most people are going to want to be with them for their money, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you got to do things that you wouldn't want to do with a billionaire. But, you know, for a billion dollars, everybody's, you know, everybody's got a price. They sure do. You know what? And that diamond necklace is going to look good. <laughs> <laughs> you would rock that diamond necklace. I don't care. And I, I just I just don't um, I just don't know why he hasn't called you. That would be see. That's yeah, the thing, I, you know. Yeah. I know. I, I really, I don't think the word has gotten out. I'm going to have to let him know. Maybe after he hears this. Yes. That phone ring. <laughs> after I dissed him on the show, then he'll definitely, yeah. you know, get a, with a whole rocket thing. Maybe he'll invite me in the rocket. Maybe I'll have a different, see the key, the thing about this show is I get upset about something, but I can be transferred into a, a state of, you know, I, yeah. ha I have been known to change my mind. So if, if he wants me to be up in a rocket, I'm not a big fan of heights. So yeah. that's, you know, but well, well, you know what? Maybe it could be part of a program to help people with their fear. Yes. And you were the first one to go ahead and try it. There you go. There you go, Jeff. Give him a call. Yes, Jeff. Is, <laughs> all right. Well, make sure he does that. Well, you know, getting on to a marriage that uh, that actually is working. Have you seen Dolly Parton now at uh, 76 that apparently has recreated her iconic image uh, for the Playboy cover? She recreated this this image of her in a bunny uh, outfit, very looking outstanding for 76. But you know why she did it? She what? did it because it was uh, her husband's Carl's birthday oh, and geez. just decided to do it. I mean, how great is that? Dolly Parton is awesome to begin with. And to yeah. do that is just, you know, just shows how great she she really okay, is. Okay, so I haven't seen the cover, 
Um, I haven't. Se- have you seen it? Well, I saw a, a picture of her in the outfit, and she looked fantastic. Oh, okay. yeah. I was going to say, are her hands big enough to cover anything? <laughs> No, no, they're they're still re- they're still they're still pretty huge. Um, yes. I mean, my goodness. I mean, I'm just thinking. I pulled weeds yesterday. My back is killing me. Can you imagine if you had a rack like that and pulling weeds? <laughs> I don't think Dolly's pulling any weeds. Okay, I think she has a guy for that. You need to get a guy for that. If I, I mean, had a rack like that, I'd have a guy like that. <laughs> You need to make the phone call. You have a guy. For, there's a guy for everything. They'll come over. They'll they'll pull your weeds. You don't. You shouldn't be. Yep. You shouldn't be messing around with back problems and you know having to no. worry about your uh, your chestuses. You know. <laughs> this is you know. Oh goodness gracious! But Dolly Parton, congratulations, seventy sixty yeah. to to Rocket, uh, recreating the vintage cover for her husband. She joked about how her body has outlasted the publication's ability to release the print cover. So that's, yeah. the, the magazine is not even, we don't even look at magazines anymore. You could find anything you want in about three seconds and it's so filthy, unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. listen, I've been dating, I've been on the online dating for a while. Yeah, you can find anything and everything. I know, and it's not always good. Yeah, sometimes no, it's too it's, much, you know? It's like, yeah. you, get, you, gotta, you gotta go back. Well, another marriage that apparently is looking at least at a good start anyway. You know, this is a good start. Gwen Stefani and, and Blake Shelton. They, uh, yeah. they got married uh, on July 3rd. They uh, had a marriage, a, a, a wedding at Shelton's Ranch in Oklahoma. And I was, you were not invited. What was, no, you, well, yeah. no, I was not. Um, yeah, that, that's all right. Yeah, I think there's going to be a big reception afterwards, you know, like in a couple of weeks. Yeah. We might get the invite then. Yeah, maybe. I mean, they're going to have some kind of people over. What do you get? So what kind of a gift do you give Blake and Gwen? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you go where they're registered? Do you give them a check? See, in Jersey and New York, we just write a check, but they're not going to want yeah. a check from us. No, no, they definitely don't want a check. But here's the thing. Well, what marriage number is this for him? Is that like his, is this his third? Yeah, I think it, it's either two or three. I don't know. Let's see. Does yeah. it say anything in here? Well, I think he was married uh, before Miranda. So, um, I, and so Gwen's his third, so I don't know if he should get a gift. This is her second, you yeah, know, I, I think you should have to, after, if you get divorced with someone after like maybe a year or two, I think you have to return the gifts. I think that yeah. should be the case. Anything more than that, you get what you get. Um, sex included. Yeah, <laughs> ex- exactly. Exactly. I mean, right. Guest a check. It's a sorry. I'm sorry. It didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. You should get you should get. Yes, that, that's that's part of it. You should get the check um, and all the money that goes along with it because it's. A, but yeah, that these. Uh, so we'll see. I mean, good. Good for uh, Blake and Gwen. Now, of course, they met on the set of The Voice back in 2014, started dating themselves a year later after their difficult divorces uh, from Rossdale and uh, Miranda Lambert. Uh, so. Uh, that's good news for them. I hope uh, I hope it works out. Most of these type of marriages don't, but you never know. Yeah, I mean, they're so those two are so different that it may work out. I mean, she is just so not him in his lifestyle, but and she's so like she's so Hollywood and and I think city girl and he's so country. But who knows? It may be something that works. Could be. I, I wish them a lot of luck. Now, yeah. you and I both know that uh, we're not getting the younger side. We're, we're a little bit above that. Uh, you're, of course, only about 30, but, you know, I'm in yeah. my 50s. And, uh, but you saw the movie Clueless, right, you, back in the day? Did you yeah. ever watch the movie? Yeah. yeah. Well, Ali- Al- Alicia, not Alicia, right? It's Alicia now, Silverstone. Yeah. Oh. Uh, according to her, she came out after 40 years of us pronouncing her name wrong. She decided it was a good idea to, it's Alicia. Yeah. Uh, Silverstone. She's celebrating that Clueless is now 26. The movie's 26 years old. Oh, my goodness. Uh, She's getting some help from her son. And this past Monday, uh, she marked almost three decades. Uh, She did this, uh, the theaters back in 1995. Um, She did a TikTok. Are you on TikTok? I don't even I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Yes, I I am. But um, it's mostly videos of my dogs. Oh, well, that that's. That would get me. 
<laughs> yeah, you're not going to find me doing a TikTok, um, but my dogs. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so this is, we got to follow you on t Now, how do you follow you on TikTok? Oh, What's, that's what? good <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, you know what? I I might be just Dana Race on TikTok. Okay. I have no idea. <laughs> we got to figure. We got to figure before the end of the show. We got to figure out how you do it. But apparently, she did a TikTok video uh, recreating one of the film's memorable scenes along with her son. Now, her son's name is Bear Blue. Bear yeah, well, Blue. You can't come out. You know what? I mean, if you like Brian, how about Brian? I know. <laughs> you know? Bear. Bear Blue. Bear. I just don't get it. Yeah. Uh, Bear stepped in to take the role of Cher's dad, who was originally played by Dan Hedia in the film. Uh, for the scene, both Silverstone and Bear dressed up with the mother of one wearing a cream-colored silk dress and her son, who Silverstone shares with her ex-husband, Christopher Jarecki, uh, sporting a comical oversized suit and a pair of black glasses. What up, Daddy. So uh, apparently uh, of all the stuff, uh, Cher's memorable line, ooh, get off of me, ugh, as if, right? Is that, the, there, there's the uh, Clueless. Uh, did you did you enjoy the movie Clueless back when it came out? See, I, I don't even remember it. I am so bad with movies. I mean, I've seen all, uh, all the 80s movies, all the 90s movies. I've seen them yeah, all. But you can't remember. But I can't remember them at all. Over vacation, we uh, we watched The Shining. I made my kids um, watch The Shining, and you know what? The first part of The Shining's boring. It's so boring, and you're just going, "Wow, why did I think this was such a good movie?" Yeah, I think what happens is you get, you, you don't realize it. It's like uh, kind of like Psycho. Once the uh, shower scene's over, you know, yeah. it's it's done. Um, it, it's kind of like the other movie. What's um. What's that movie now with Matthew Modine? Um, it's with uh, uh, D'Onofrio's in it too, and he plays Leonard, and, as, and they're in a they're they're in the Marines, and I can't uh, I can't remember the name of it. But there's a the the big mo the movie is great in the beginning of basic training, and they go through this whole thing, and then after that, it's like oh my god, once they kill off Leonard, it, it's like you know it's over. Yeah. It's it's sound asleep on yeah, the couch. Yeah, it's pretty much that. That's what happened. So I I understand, but The Shining was a was good. The second half of the movie, you're right. Yes. You know, John. You know, here comes yes. Johnny. <laughs> that those are good, and it makes you realize how good the actors are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was the that was the biggest thing. You know, just watching him, and you're going, wow, he was so good. But it is the. the the first part of it was just so boring. You're just like, just get to the point. Just get to the point, you know? <laughs> you don't, and I tried to, so I was watching a movie last night or, uh, you know, early this week. I watched the movie and I, from what everybody has told me of this movie, it is fantastic. And I've heard nothing but rave reviews from it. Rebel Without a Cause. It's an old yeah. movie. And, oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's old. Very old. Uh, it's with James Dean and uh, it's uh, Jim Backus is in it and uh, Natalie Wood and, and other people. But the interesting thing about this movie, I'm, I, I watched it for like 40 minutes and I was lost. I'm like, this is this is not very good. I mean, maybe maybe I have to sit and watch it again. And, and you know, please uh, send me a note on this. But I just didn't get the whole if anybody has seen the movie. Uh, Rebel Without a Cause. I know there was rave reviews about it, and uh, I, I just, I just don't get it. It was not good. Well, it, so was it rave reviews at the time it came out? Could be that probably. And there's nothing at that time to compare it to. It's meaning this is great for its time. Now, nope. Yeah. You know, no, I don't know. I just, it, I couldn't follow it. It was just so hard. It was yeah. not, not good at all. I, I don't know. Maybe again. Maybe I need to sit down, focus, and just, uh, you know, maybe. I, I, I don't you know. Just, Did, have you ever seen it or, or no? Maybe a long time ago. And you can't, you know. Hell, you can't remember what you did yesterday. Never mind a 50-year-old movie, right? Oh, forget that. <laughs> well, that, So there are a lot of movies uh, that you remember better as a kid. And when you watch it, or even TV shows that really were, you thought were good as a kid. Like Good Times was one that I loved. Yeah. And I watch it now and I'm like, this is not very good. Well, you know what? I think the biggest one is uh, you watch you watch 
all in the family. And yeah. you know damn well back then that was hysterical. Yes. That was the best show ever. Now you're going, oh, you can't do that. No. <laughs> no. No. You can't say half the thing. Hey, hey, Sammy, you want some want some cream in your eye? <laughs> you can't say that either. It's just, yeah, there's there's a lot of those type of shows that, you know, there's some that, that stand the test of time. And I've always said that, like the Honeymooners, yeah. it was just a black and white show in a little apartment, but it was brilliant. Everybody Loves Raymond is another show that will last forever. That is another yeah. good show. Well, it's funny, my daughter, um, who's my oldest one, is 24, she just started watching uh, Seinfeld. So what we said to her, though, is that, um, you know, she, she goes, it, it's, I, I'm not feeling it yet. And we said, skip, like, for the first season. You know what, you can either skip the first season or go towards the end of the first season. That's when it starts to get really good. She's like, am I going to miss anything? I said, no, the show's about nothing. <laughs> I said, oh. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Each episode has nothing to do with the episode before. So that's a good one. But you got to skip a couple episodes in the first season for it to be really good. Yeah, because if you remember um, when Seinfeld came out, it, it was not even doing well at all. No. And then it just, for some reason, took off. In yeah. like, I, I think it was like three or four seasons. It, it wasn't early on, but it was like must-see TV. It was part of that must-see Thursday night TV. And Seinfeld became, you know, it was always brilliant, but mm -hmm. you had to watch it to get brilliant. It's kind of like like this show. We we think yeah. it's brilliant, <laughs> but if nobody's listening, if a tree falls in the in the forest is, and, and nobody's there, does it really, you know, does anybody hear no. it, right? You and I are the only ones here in that yeah, damn tree. <laughs> I think so. And, I, you know, I try. I, I do my best on these type of things. But, yeah, Seinfeld is, is a show about nothing, which is kind of what I did here. I, I like to yeah. do kind of a show about nothing. And uh, he, he does the comedians in cars getting coffee. That's another show. I kind of like like this where we just have a conversation. We're not getting coffee, although I'd like to get uh, maybe a little drink. I actually had a couple of weeks ago on the show, Brian Pitts and I, who you know, we did yeah. a we we did a show. He was actually here in the Lens Burning Bush Studios, uh, and 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 we had a drink and we were talking about mob movies. I mean that's a fun episode. So if you haven't listened a couple weeks ago to the mob uh, mob show, uh, it was very good. You know, it was an, it was a podcast offer you can't refuse. Is the episode. Yeah. So if you're if you're just <laughs> tuning in now, uh, maybe you need to go back and and get to a better episode. Right? <laughs> is that what you're saying, Dana? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it, it is. But I, I enjoy doing this. I, I keep, uh, you know, holding out hope that, uh, you know, all the people I bashed or all the companies that I've bashed that might sponsor me, you know, that you always have to <laughs> say, hey, you know, can you can you can you throw me a little bit here? So what do you you know, you've been on the air. You've been you know, you did plenty of things. Traffic, you were country. You've done it all. You're you're a very talented individual. Where are you now? How can how can people consume Dana Race more than they need to? Oh, my goodness. If you need more of me, um, I am on a station in the Albany, New York area, and it's Q1057. So Q1057.com, you can listen. Uh, just doing weekends right now, and, and uh, maybe some changes coming in the uh, near future. We're... Okay. Uh, one of those things. It's radio. <laughs> I know you. You have to be prepared for the for the change. I have a question though. It's Q one hundred five point seven. Why not just yeah. call themselves Q one hundred six? Like <laughs> that's true. You're at a roundup. One hundred one nine is Q one hundred two, right in Cincinnati, yeah. right? Yeah. I'll yeah, ask Grover yeah. Collins, who was on a few weeks ago, and ask him about that. You know, you get a roundup because that's <laughs> it. Sounds better at Q one hundred six. I know they just it, and this one has been around for so long. Uh, it's a classic rock station, so it's not it's saying it's one of those things, you know, you can't change those old timers. <laughs> That's exactly right. So last week I talked with uh, I talked about the show Sex in the City. It was one of those things where I um, I talked with a, with you know several people about it. They, you know, they think I'm very sensitive because I watched this show. It's kind of, you know, are you sure you're not a teenage girl? You know, yeah. the, you know, you got a girl side. That's all right. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's um, but anyway, the show is coming out again. I don't know. Did you ever watch the show? Yes. Yep. I watched it. Um, you know, all your you always, you know, as a 
female watching it, you kind of like, okay, which one are you? You know, yeah. out of the four, the four girls, you know, everybody wanted to be Sarah Jessica Parker. I mean, come on with those shoes. Yeah. <laughs> but you would hurt yourself with those shoes. No, I can run in heels. So okay. I can tell. Right. Yes. Um, so I'm trying to think Miranda. Oh my God. What's the girl with the jet black hair? What was her name? Uh, like that is, Oh wait, one second. Now that I think of it, it's uh well, there was Samantha, who is not going to be part of the, the show. That's exactly. Kim Cattrall. And yeah. uh, the other girl is coming back. Uh, Miranda was, I think, with the Mer short yeah. red hair. Yeah, she's the short red hair. Um, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other one yeah. with the dark hair. She's coming back, yeah, too. Yeah, she's coming back as well. So we'll, 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 we'll get it. But Bridget yeah. Moynihan apparently is coming back. I don't know if you know Bridget from uh, Blue what? Bloods. But she oh, is Bridget. coming back as Natasha. Who played Big's uh, second wife, Natasha? Oh, okay. So that's yeah. yeah. So wait a minute. So is she with Big, or she's not with Big? No, she. I, I would imagine that uh, Big and and Sarah Jessica Parker, or you know, still going to be um, together. But this is just the, um, the they're just teasing a little bit, showing yeah. somebody on Instagram found out that Bridget was on the set and. So they mm -hmm. kind of put all this together that, uh, you know, it's uh, it, it isn't. But, but the, you know, the show's coming back. Uh, so uh, Cynthia Nixon was the other uh, was was Miranda. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I'm going to look a little bit more as I should have had this out. But, you know, sometimes Kristen Davis. Um, okay. Yeah. That was the other one. She was the other one. Yes. Yeah. She she was uh, brilliant uh, in the show. But uh, it was Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, Kristen Davis, who reprised their roles as Carrie Bradshaw, Miranda Hobbs, and Charlotte was the Charlotte, darkest. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, Kim Cattrall said no. So no Samantha Jones, no Kim Cattrall. Yeah. Um, I wonder how, how they're writing her off on this Well, I thing. think they're probably going to recast. I, I don't think they're going to write her off. I don't know. I, uh, I saw no, something where, you know. That's so. a tough one to recast. I mean, she had that down. She was perfect for that. You know, um, yeah, so you were either in my friend's group, we had the certain, you know, two that were definitely uh, Miranda and Charlotte, um, you know, and then you just, yeah, and then you had the group of, of um, Sarah Jessica Parker and um, Samantha, you know, yeah. Sam. Yeah, you know, I mean, that was what those were your, it, it was just that defined. So I was on either end of those, you know, I could, I could be a Sam if I wanted to be. Well, do you know Sam? <laughs> Her first role was in the movie Porky's. She was up in the in the in the uh, top of the gymnasium, and she she was the howler. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. <laughs> you, you really do. Back back then, that was like the biggest thing you could see on a movie. Like that was that was it. Now, like you said, yeah. we we can get so much, and we can go into so many different uh, yeah. things. But uh, it's fun. Fun, fun. But Sex in the City reboot coming on. Do you like the reboots? I've asked uh, I asked my guests about this every week because I, I kind of I have mixed emotions about certain reboots. Yeah. You know what? Here's the thing. I don't I really don't. This is this is terrible. Like this. Like so I, I love rock and roll. Really love love the 80s. The big hair. Yeah. The, the stuff like that. But I don't want to see any of those bands. And the reason why <laughs> And yes, I saw them so many times, but the fact to see them on stage and how old they got, I just can't handle it. I don't know what it is. I love their music, but I would rather just in my mind, let them stay young, you know? So the reboot for especially Sex and the City, it's just going to be so different. I might watch the first one, and if it doesn't catch me to stay in, I'm not going to watch the rest of it. No, and, and I'm the same way. I mean, I, I tried Mad About You. It wasn't very good. A few others yeah. that just never. But getting back to your musical thing, <laughs> uh, I think I think it would be fun to have the Rolling Stones, uh, Kiss, Def Leppard, all these bands come out to Caesars Palace and call it the Geezers at Caesars. You can <laughs> you can go in and you can see all your bands and, you know, you could be 75 in the audience and still enjoy rocking to you know, all the all the great songs. Yeah, I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. Oh, my goodness. I mean, you, you could do that. Here's my thing. I really believe that the Rolling Stones had made a deal with the devil. Yeah. There is absolutely no way. They're 77, 80 years old. Holy moly. 
Who does that? I know. They drink. Oh my goodness, they haven't died of a disease, which is terrible to say. But I'm just like Mick Jagger just survived another heart attack. I mean, he's like eighty, whatever, out on the stage. Keith Richards has been dead for twenty years, and nobody's told him. <laughs> I know. I know. And that's the thing. You're going. What deal did they make with the devil? I know. Oh my god, it had to be. <laughs> Well, there was a movie, and it's funny, I'm going to date myself on this, and I'm probably going to get people to say, who the heck is this? But there was a movie called Oh God, You Devil, with George oh, Burns I, playing God and the Devil. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, see, yes. I, I have a funny story about that. So I was at, with uh, a bunch of younger people, let's just say, yeah. back, uh, <laughs> this is going back about 2012-ish. I was in Las Vegas for work. And I was with a bunch of younger people. We were having yep. a discussion. And they said something about God. And I said, oh, George Burns. And they <laughs> looked at me like, I swear to God, I said something like, who is George Burns? I Aww. go, you don't know who George Burns is. And yeah, I, I guess he had been dead for yeah. several years. I mean, probably 10, 15 years. But I just don't understand how people don't know history. Like, how do you not know your I actors know. that came before? I, I just enjoyed a lot of the movies to me. You know, I think the generation that anything that was born in the 2000 is not going to know any of the good, good ones we know. You know, I, I really think that's what it's going to be. I mean, it's I mean, that's why I think I said to my kids, let's watch these movies might be terrible to me. They were good. Yeah. Let's watch, you know, well, I did that with uh, Ferris Bueller. Uh, yeah. was, uh, but it's funny, my son, you know, Stephen goes. This is all right, but, you know, you're just basically giving me, this is when he watched it, he said, you're just basically giving me a way to skip school. <laughs> so he you're was like, smart. That's true. But like pretty. <laughs> so did that. Yeah. Pretty in Pink. That was another, another good yeah. movie. A lot of good, a lot of those 80 movies, um, you know, Better, uh, Amanda, Orlando was on a couple weeks ago. We talked about Better Off Dead. That was a classic. Yeah. I want my $2. <laughs> Lane Meyer, you know. Oh my goodness! Yeah, what was um, was was Pretty in Pink the one where he's sitting on the car with the uh, where they're having the no 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 that was with um, um, hold on he holds up the radio yeah, uh, the, yeah. Um, the boombox and he's singing um, Peter Gabriel yeah yeah <laughs> Peter Gabriel that was uh, that was another you know it's funny how uh, we forget these things this is what happens when we get older we forget you know the the stuff that. Um, but that was another good movie, and he was also in a lot of good movies. Uh, yeah. Ke you know, um, trying to think of uh, Cusack. Yeah, that was it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. John Cusack was in that movie, and we'll, we'll, it'll come to us. But yeah. it's, uh, it's it, another, uh -huh. great, another great movie. But, yeah, there was also One Crazy Summer, kind of silly movie uh, that he was in with Bobcat Goldthwait. Um, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. See, and people, kids won't even know who he is. No. <laughs> They don't know any of them. It's like, you know, they don't even know any of these people. But, you know, what are you going to do? I you, know. <laughs> you know, you can like Lens Burning Bush, though, on Facebook, at Lens yes. Burning Bush. So please do that. Um, you please. can follow it. You know, uh, you know, please follow me. Follow me on Twitter, at Lens Burning Bush, because you'll, you'll find out about the latest episodes. You can go back. There's 67 other episodes. that you, you. Yeah, I don't even know how that happened, but 67 other episodes. <laughs> now, you also know. That when we do these episodes, that they're going to be on YouTube as well. The uh, we don't record the video, but the audio is on YouTube. So make sure. What do you? How does that go now? You like, subscribe, and ask for notifications. Hit the hit the bell. Yeah. Right? Is yep. that how that YouTube uh, works? That was all of them. Yep. Like, subscribe, and then get those notifications. Turn uh, those notifications. Okay. So we need to do that because I don't have many subscribers to the YouTube portion of the I show. I will go over there and do that right now. Thank you so much. You're so good. This is why, uh, you know, I, I want you to come back to Cincinnati so we can have some fun. Although I have to go to, I'm actually taking my, my son. We're going to see the Yankees uh, against the Orioles on Monday, August 2nd. And then we're going uh, as well uh, to see the Mets and Reds at uh, oh. City Field. So he's going to get the uh, New York experience. Oh, that's awesome. Good. Yeah. That so, is so good. We wow, like on. hopefully not raining hopefully nice nice both days and wins for new york absolutely let's have that now you can listen on itunes spotify google play podbean iheart radio tune in you can even ask alexa to play lens burning bush but if you do make sure you say lens burning bush podcast 
because I don't know what you're going to get if you go the other way. <laughs> there might be something that comes up, and if you're not in you're in the mixed company, it's probably not a good idea. Um, <laughs> She's going to go, are you sure? <laughs> I think so. But thank you for doing this a second time. I, I think that uh, I'm having some people come on, you know, a second time. It's, it's, it's nice to... Uh, get reconnected again. We're going to have uh, Cooper Lawrence is going to be back on in the beginning of August. We got, we actually have a comedian coming on next week. Uh, Shelly Coleman from New York uh, is coming on. Okay. I've got Cooper and Heather and Tina Servassi are coming back and the month of August is getting filled and Good. We're, we're going to continue to try to do this. I've started um, with some motorcycle, like trying to learn. I don't know if I told you that story that hasn't been going as well as I'd like it to no. go. I'm trying to find another bike that works for me maybe a scooter um yeah. but but three wheeler <laughs> but i've been watching a lot of people on youtube and i'm trying to get them to come on the show also and I oh, hope, no. yeah so this Good. this way we could talk a little bit about motorcycles and all that stuff so so thank you again uh keep safe uh the world is much better place with you in it so make sure that uh you know enjoy the shore uh, you will. go down the shore in new jersey that's how it works it's down the shore because uh, yeah. down the shore, everything's all right. It is. Yeah. <laughs> See, look at that. Well, thank you, Dana Race. I'm thank Len Harvey. You. We'll be back with another episode of Lens Burning Bush next week. So long. <laughs>